the gospel of the Lord. I remember one Christmas Eve as a priest in the morning, I was called to give the last rites to a lady dying of cancer. And her children were gathered around her as she was dying of cancer. And her son says, this is not what Christmas is supposed to look like. Christmas isn't supposed to be like this. He says. And the dying mother says, No. This is precisely what Christmas is supposed to be like. That in the midst of death, in the midst of dying, and we are all the living dead, all of us, those who are in heaven are the real living. We are the ones who are dying. Each day that passes is a day we get closer to our eternity. Christmas is supposed to be joy in the midst of trouble. The first Christmas happened in the midst of great violence and political discord. May I remind you, Herod was out to kill Jesus. They had to flee. There was no room for them in the inn. Jesus was born in a cave with animals in a manger. Mary and Joseph were poor people. We know that because they gave today a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. That was the offering of the destitute. Christmas happens in the midst of pain, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a virus that's raging, in the midst of crazy politicians, in the midst of your own issues. A 92-year-old lady that I spoke to before Christmas on December 23rd, she's dying. She has stage 4 terminal cancer. She's 92 years old. And she had to spend Christmas by herself. Because her fear-stricken, modern children told her, Mom, it's COVID-19. We can't visit you. Her last Christmas, she had to spend by herself. What do you say? And yet, in the midst of all of this, in the midst of so much depression and anxiety and fear and worry, in the midst of people losing their jobs, in the midst of hypocritical politicians who are making pronouncements for all of us so-called peon folks and they, you know, on their th lofty thrones, living in their mansions. In the midst of all of this, we still celebrate Christmas. And in the midst of this, over this Christmas of 
which is so unusual, so messy. You know, the first Christmas was messy too, you know. It was surrounded by a lot of caca. And in the midst of all of this, I come into the church, and here we have the baby Jesus. Manny, can they see the baby Jesus here, the one that we have, the big one? Can they see him? Okay, show it. Show him the big Jesus. Okay. And in the midst of, here's Jesus right here, you know, placed. And I come into church over the Christmas masses that I had. And this little girl comes with her, uh, with her parents. I don't know. I think she's about five or so. Okay. And she's here. And you know what she does? Right when she comes in, because I was right in here. You know what she did? She starts yelling. He's here! She says, he's here! He's here! Because, of course, her parents told her that Christmas is about Jesus coming and being born. And she looks at him and she says, he's here! She was so excited. Which you are not, because you ain't a child. And maybe that's what we need to regain on Christmas, in the midst of the caca. In the midst of the world we live in. Huh? Is that childlike excitement that he's here. You know, when people in the Bible realized that Jesus was there, that Jesus was here, their life was never the same. Your life should never be the same either. That mother that was dying on that Christmas day, she says, this is exactly what Christmas is all about because even though I am dying, Jesus is here. You have any excitement about Jesus being here? You know, when the people realized in the Bible that the child had been born to a virgin, let me remind you, what is a womb of a virgin like? I need, do I need to teach you all some biology here as well? Not just theology. <laughs> what, is the, what is the womb of a virgin like? There's no life there. No life is supposed to happen in the womb of a virgin. Am I speaking here or not? You know, it's supposed to be a place that is empty. When they realized what had happened... They understood that God was putting life where life was thought to be impossible. The womb of a virgin stays empty. But God, through the angel Gabriel, reveals that God has decided to put new life where no life should happen. And when they realized what was happening, what did they do? They shout, glory to God in the highest and peace to people of goodwill. When Mary visits Elizabeth, the infant leaps like that little girl that I saw here in church when she saw Jesus. The infant leaped with great joy. What does Mary say when she realizes what is happening? My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My spirit rejoices in the midst of her caca life. Her spirit rejoices. She was able to rejoice. And what does Simeon say today? My own eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory to your people, Israel. When people realize what is happening, that God is working miracles where no miracle should ever be possible, that all things are possible for God, even a virgin getting pregnant, they leap for joy. When God decides to put life where no life should happen, the world is turned upside down and nothing is ever the same. And then you can be dying of cancer and still 
have a Merry Christmas. You know, those children, I'll never forget. It's the, the, I'm, I'm there and I'm, I'm saying to the, to the lady, you know, because I'm there to hear her confession. And, and I said, um, I'm going to forgive you all of your sins with the, with the anointing of the sick and the daughter you know, the, these modern people, I just, you know, they, they, they just don't get it, you know. All these folks today who, who think they're so sophisticated, you know, the, with their Apple uh, computers and, and everything else. And, you know, they're, they're, they just don't get it. And he, he, he and she over there and their mother with her faith, with her simple faith dying of cancer and having a Merry Christmas and him with his apple, whatever he had, in his hand. And I say, you know, I'm going to forgive you all of your sins so that you can go right to heaven. And he looks at me and he says, my mother has no sins. Like, okay. You know. I'll never forget that Christmas Eve morning, meeting a lady who has such great faith, and then meeting her modern children, you know, these new, the new kind today, uh, who don't need church. They just did a study that people who go to church during this time, you know, they have such Hap, such more happy lives. I should put that study on my, I'll put it up on Facebook so you can see it. And yet, these sophisticated modern politicians will keep, you know, they will keep your, your uh, uh, casinos open, bursting at the seams. Can't find any parking spaces, I'm told, at the casinos. No social distancing or physical distancing on airplanes. Restaurants in many places can remain open. Uh, and uh, you can go to Walmart and be bumper to bumper with people. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm speaking here. Our wonderful governor here in California, he can go to the French Laundry and have a party for 50 people, shoulder to shoulder, no, no masks, you know, enjoy a, a $500 uh, a person meal in, in the most expensive restaurant in Yantville. That's right around the corner. You got to wait a couple of years to get in there. And then all of us so-called peon folks, you know, we can't go to church. I'm speaking here. This is the sick world we live in. And we celebrate Christmas. And we do. And we will. Every year around Christmas time, there's billboards all over the United States put up by these atheist groups that say, why are you celebrating Christmas? Don't you know it's all just a story? And I want to look at him and I say, try living without that story. That's why you all want to kill yourselves. That's why you want euthanasia and be able to pop pills. And that's why you kill babies while we celebrate babies. I'd rather keep my faith than have their sorry life of no faith and want to crush our faith. I'm getting too much into things right now, but I'm, I'm mad, you all know. So much so that I get boiling when I see all that's going on. Or we need to have the church closed while everything else can remain open. Faith is non-essential, we are told, by these modern folks. What's more essential than fuel, than gas for your soul, 
for your spirit to know that all things are possible. I'm inviting you today to that faith, that simple faith that is able to, like that little girl over this Christmas holiday, leap and shout for joy. He's here. And when he's here, everything is possible. Did you hear that, angel? That's why maybe everyone in the Christmas story is singing and dancing. The angels shouting, the infant leaping in Elizabeth's womb. Mary exclaiming, filled with joy, excitement. This good news should make you rejoice today. If you would finally get it, that God is constantly at work creating life, life, where there is no life possible. Abraham and Sarah, they ran out of hope, didn't they? That's why I was so insistent we read the first reading today and the second reading too from the book of Hebrews. Did you hear the book of Hebrews? Did you all have coffee this morning? You did? You all awake? I hope you all are over there, even at home, you know, watching me on Facebook and, and YouTube. You know, Moses had coffee every day, too. You know Moses? Do you know how Moses made his coffee? You know how Moses made coffee? He brews. <laughs> <laughs> So you got to have some sense of humor in the midst of all this BS going around. You got to still you got to still keep your faith and relax and you know and know that this too shall pass. Herod is long gone and all these politicians will be long gone too, but my faith will remain. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. God is the same. Everybody changes. This world changes. It's all withering and going away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word will not pass away. And the word is Jesus Christ. The Bible says, I am God and I change not. That's what we focus on and believe in. That we have our faith. And you know, Abraham and Sarah, they ran out of hope. Sarah is old and barren. That's why Abraham says his servant will inherit all he has. Abraham and Sarah have a hopeless life, don't they? They live in a smelly tent. Did you notice? Abraham and Sarah find themselves in a tent. There was no ventilation in those tents, and there was a fire in the middle of it. Only a little hole opened up. So they're in a smelly tent because it was made out of sheep skin. You ever, I, we had sheep when I was growing up. I know something about sheep, y'all, okay? And sheep are smelly animals. They stink. So Abraham is living a stinky, suffocating life. Not only that, there was fire in the middle of that tent. And what happens? It was burning. His life was burning him. A stinky, smelly, burning life. And it is to this hopeless life that God announces the coming of Isaac. God says, watch me. Watch me. Watch me put life where you don't think it can happen because you think the way human beings do. But I am God. Do you believe in God? Or are you so modern? You know, and we're in 2020. This faith stuff is, you know, for my grandma. I want my grandma's faith. Because she was able to get through anything. I don't know about you all. I'd rather have that faith that, that visits my, my mother who's 92 years old and dying of cancer. Huh? 
I'd rather have that faith that I'm dying on Christmas Eve morning and I'm able to say I'm still having a Merry Christmas. Because I know where I'm going. I know that life doesn't end. God says to Sarah and Abraham, watch me. Watch me put life where you don't think it can happen. Because you think the way human beings do. But I am God. And my ways are different. My ways are not your ways. Watch me, says God. And what happens? What did the Bible say today? Isaac was born. Isaac was born. God, in order to invite Abraham to see what it is that he is up to in his life, says to him, Abraham, get out of that tent. Isn't that what the Bible said today? You didn't pay attention because you didn't do what Moses does. You didn't have your coffee, okay? Remember, he brews, okay? <laughs> he says, get out. Step out of your tent and watch me. Get out of your tent, Abraham. Get out of that smelly tent. Your life stinks, Abraham, so get out and let's do something. In this stinky life, in this hot life that is burning him, that is suffocating him, because there isn't much ventilation there, Abraham is all feeling sorry for himself. How many of you all are feeling sorry for yourselves? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Your life is beautiful. God wouldn't have it any other way. Stop saying how, how sorry your life is because it is into an empty, barren life. That God says, get out, step out. That is what God is saying to you today. Step outside and look at the stars. What did, the, what did, what did uh, God say to Abraham? What did he say? You forgot? Oh my gosh. Okay, he says... Step outside and look at the stars, Abraham. Did you look at the stars? You know, the first thing we do on Christmas Eve, the youngest person in a Polish family, and I had a Polish Christmas Eve, the youngest person, and I was always the youngest, and in fact, on this Christmas Eve, I was also the youngest, okay? So you have to get outside, and you have to look for the first star, and then you have to and you can't start eating until the youngest member, Google this one, okay, what we do in Polish families. We have such beautiful traditions. And the youngest person has to run into the house and start yelling, the star is here! Like that little girl here, you know. He's here! What did God say to Abraham? Get out of the tent, Abraham, and look at the stars. In other words, see the possibility. Look how beautiful life is because I am in it. Look at what I am doing. I am making all things new. Abraham, step out. Watch me. Watch me step out of this depressed state, this stinky state, this burning state, this suffocating state. A Abraham, get out. I'm trying to tell you all something here. Look at, the, look at the stars. You know, he says, look at the, the you, you will have descendants as numerous as the sand on a, on a seashore. And Abraham waited. Do you know when the promise was made that he would receive a son? Chapter 12 of the book of Genesis. When was the promise given? Chapter 22. Ten chapters. Read it, what happens in the ch ten chapters between 12 and 22. Ten chapters. Do you know all the things that happen? I don't have time right now to get into it, although I could. You know, I'm very capable. Okay? 
I, if I just started telling you all that Abraham went through and what did he do while he waited on God to act? He trusted. That's the difference between people of faith and people of the devil. The devil doesn't trust God. The devil believes in God. There's a lot of believers out there, you know. Oh, I believe in God. Yeah, so what? The devil believes in God too. What do you want, a cookie because you believe in God? But if you don't trust God, you have to trust God. Jesus said to St. Faustina, don't put underneath my picture. Jesus, I believe in you. Because anybody believes. Even the devil believes. The devil knows the creed better than any of us. Jesus said, Jesus, I trust in you. So who do you trust? The world? The politicians? I trust in Jesus. And he never disappoints me. He may make me wait ten chapters to get to the promise that he made. But if he if God promises, God delivers. That's the Bible. Either you believe it or not. God in the Bible says, in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, Blessed are those who wait for the Lord. The Lord is good to those who wait on him. Who do you wait for? Wait and watch. God is acting. New life is happening 2021 for all of you is going to be a great year. Who's got that attitude with me? It's going to be a wonderful year. It's all about your attitude. Are you a person of faith or not? What's the definition of faith? The ability to be able to relax. I am relaxed. Are you all relaxed? <clears throat> We're supposed to be leaping and shouting and enjoying. Have a glass of wine, y'all. Okay. In fact, you know what? In Poland, it's, it's considered to be bad luck to have a glass of wine without a shot of vodka. <laughs> Actually, you know that uh, vodka was invented in Poland. Google that one too if you don't believe me. Vodka comes from Poland. See, all good things come from Poland. Father Adam comes from Poland. You know... <laughs> In other words, relax, everybody. Relax. Right before Christmas Eve, you know, we used to go to this cold stone church. And the first thing they would give us always to be able to get through midnight mass, because it was really cold. And the pre if you think I talk a lot, you should have seen my pastor growing up. Oh my goodness. Especially on Christmas Eve when everybody came to church. He had his opportunity. Okay. So <laughs> they used to give us shots of homemade vodka to get us through it because everybody was shivering and cold, you know, right inside of the, uh, of the stone called church. But we don't need any shots here because our shot comes from our faith, from Jesus. In other words, what is my message to you all as we're getting ready for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day? What am I trying to tell you all? What I'm trying to tell you all is, I, okay, I'm not telling you to drink vodka, okay? <laughs> no, okay, what I'm saying is what God told Abraham, get out, get out, step out, out of the tent. What's the tent that you're in? What is your tent? What is your tent? You know, is it the tent of fear? The tent of depression? What is your tent? What's the tent that you find yourself in? The tent where you say, oh, I'm not going to find a new job. I'm not going to get through this addiction. My children won't get better. You know, is that the tent? What is the tent you're in? Oh my gosh, you know. It's going to take them a whole year to get us vaccinated. Oh my, is that the tent you're in? Or is it a positive one? Positivity out of the tent. The, the, the stars of heaven. Listen to the news that was given to Abraham. 
Zechariah and Elizabeth are both beyond childbearing age, and God says to them what? Watch me. John the Baptist is born. It's all over the Bible all the time. If you just read the Bible, okay? But you all prefer to watch Judge Judy, okay? Or some other stuff, all right? Read the Bible. Mary is a virgin, and God says what? Watch me. And Jesus is born. Later on in the Gospels, Jesus is placed in the tomb, in the grave, in a cave. He's born in a cave, and then at the end, he's placed in a cave as well. And there's a stone put by it, right? What is more lifeless than a tomb? I mean, come on now. What is more lifeless than a tomb? Any place more hopeless than a tomb? Any place where no life should ever be possible than a grave? And God says what? That's our faith, isn't it? What does God say? Watch me. And Jesus is raised from the dead. And we rise with him. So you ready to start singing yet? Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. You ready to be like that little girl that came in and she says, He is here! He's here, he's here. Huh? That's the glorious gospel. The good news of our faith. To never lose hope. Ever. Even in the midst of a crazy pandemic world, we never lose hope, ever. And we always watch and stand ready because our redemption is at hand. Isn't that, oh my God, I just, I'm getting something right now. That's precisely what the, what the gospel said today. Stand ready. Your redemption is at hand. Anna the prophetess spent her time in the temple. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. You didn't, you didn't pay attention to this because, you, you know, you, you just hear this here once and you don't read the Bible bef before you come to church, the readings, and then I have to, that's why I have to talk so much. You know, it's your fault. <laughs> what did wh where's the temple the bible says we are the temple that's you you are the temple of the holy spirit she never left the worship of god inside of herself it doesn't mean that she stayed in the temple night and day i mean come on now okay she was a person constantly praying Constantly being aware of the presence of God in her life. Are you? And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child. Hello, the child. To all who are awaiting, awaiting. Are you? Are you awaiting the redemption? That's change. You know, re redeeming is to be changed, you know. When you go to redeem, when I go to Poland, I have to redeem my dollars for Zlotis. Or when I go to Mexico, I have to exchange my dollars for pesos. You, and it's called the, re, re, you redeem it, right? It means you exchange it. We're, we're awaiting our redemption, a change. Are you? We find ourselves today with parts of our life that feel so lifeless, so hopeless. There are parts of our life that feel so empty, so worn down, and we find ourselves often saying that nothing new can ever happen here. My life will stay empty. 
Well, I have news for all of you today. Jesus is here. Look at him. Did you even take a moment to look at Jesus? Look at him. You should all have a Jesus in your house, okay, to look at a baby Jesus. All right? When God sends Jesus and sends him into the barren, the empty, the womb of a virgin, he's saying that precisely where nothing new was ever thought possible to ever happen, that miracles can happen. Your miracle is on its way. Jesus is here. The hope you seek, the life you want, the love you need, the gas you need, the spark you need, the strength you need, it's here. Jesus is here. So if you find yourself seeing a future of emptiness because you've lost your spouse or because of your bills or because you have lost your job or because of your marital issues or because of your sickness or disease or because of your addiction or because your loved one is sick or if you find yourself looking at an empty life that feels so empty, so hopeless because of a drug addiction of your child or the alcoholism of your spouse or your depression and anxiety, whatever it may be, whatever emptiness you find yourself staring at right now in your life because you have family members that don't talk to you or that want nothing to do with you or that are judgmental with you, that don't understand you. Well, I got news for you. I'm speaking this morning. Jesus is here. Hope is here. Huh? 2021 is going to be the best year of our lives because with God, the best is yet to come, is it not? What's your attitude? The best is yet to come because Jesus is here. And all things are possible when Jesus is in my life. Nothing will ever be the same. Are you leaping for joy? Are you shouting for joy? Are you acting like all those people in the Bible did? So where do the empty go with their emptiness? It is to you that God says today, you who may find yourself staring at some empty place like the womb of a virgin or the barren womb of Sarah or Elizabeth. I'm speaking. Where do the empty go with their emptiness? We go to Jesus where we have come right now. Jesus. And you know what that makes me want to do? It makes me want to shout. Jesus is here. Who's gonna shout with me? Amen.